Today, we're going to go through the process of implementing the 1.8 patch to Survival Game Kit version 1.74. Now, this particular video is going to be using the Advanced Locomotion System and Survival Game Kit merged versions that I've done in previous videos. So if you are using just a plain Survival Game Kit without Advanced Locomotion System, uh, I have other videos for that that you can go that take you all the way up to the current version. So make sure you go to that series. If you are using the merged one based on my videos, then this is the series that you're going to be wanting to go through. So make sure that you're on 1.74 currently. Uh, if you're on a previous version of this, follow one of my other videos to, and you have to do them each in order to get you to the 1.74 version. If you're on a version after this, then you'll probably want to skip this and find a video pertaining to the current version you're on. If you find this video helpful, make sure you check out the links below this video. I'm going to link to my Discord server if you want to ask a question or if you want to help give answers to some questions that other people might have. Uh, it's a place where we kind of hang out. There's a lot of fellow developers in there, and it's a great resource. Also, my Patreon, if you want to help purchase uh, different assets that I can do videos on in the future, uh, that really helps me out because you know, I don't have every asset up to this point, and some of them I'd like to get, and they're on my wish list. Also, make sure you like, subscribe, and click the little bell for this uh, video if you want to get notifications of the future videos. Let's go ahead and get started. First of all, if you want to, you can follow along at diffusestudios.com. They have the patch notes in there for Survival Game Kit, and I'll be starting with the 1.8 patch notes. This is a fairly big one, uh, so hopefully you'll be able to follow along and see some of the processes that I'm doing. There will be a few things that are unique and different than, uh, than what you're seeing in these images, and that's what we're going to be covering in this video. We're going to be going through and making sure that you only do changes that won't break your advanced locomotion merge. So let's go ahead and get started on that by first... We want to go through and fix an issue with the save system. Uh, it was loading duplicate grids for new clients when they connected. So to get to this, make sure you're on the showcase level. And then on the lower left, select survival game kit. And then search for inventory save system. Go ahead and double click that. And then we need to get to the start auto, auto save timer. If you're not there on the left-hand side, search for start auto save timer, double click it. It'll take you to this screen. And then we're wanting to find a comment box that says load grid save. It's just to the right of the middle there. And there's a branch that then goes into that uh, load grids. We need to make a little bit of space. So go ahead and move the, the whole overall comment box a little bit more to the right. And then drag everything from the load grid save over just to the right sum enough for a uh, switch uh, that's in it. It's actually a macro that exists. So drag off of true and let's search for switch as authority. You can just place that in the middle and it will, as you can see, check to make sure it's a local connection that has authority. And then it will continue on to load the grid saves. If it doesn't, then it ends it right there. So. That takes care of the first patch. Go ahead and hit compile and save on that. Now we need to do something with the master character. So let's just take a quick look at advanced locomotion system and how we've done this. I'm going to clear this filter. I'm going to look at uh, blueprints here. And let's look at the ALS base character. You can see that we have the base character. This is stuff from advanced locomotion system. And then the parent of it is the master character. Go ahead and hit the search box on that. You can see that is under survival game kit blueprints characters and this is since it's the parent things that aren't duplicated so advanced locomotion system the ALS based character let's say you have over here uh, something like begin play or one of the standard uh, one of the standard things like here event begin play this is in the child if you have an event begin play here in the parent it doesn't actually run uh, and you know, let's go ahead and jump to it. So this will never actually run because it's being overridden by the child. So these are things that we have to keep in mind as we're working in these blueprints, uh, the, the parent and the child relationship. But here, because we do have this parented, we can make some changes and those do carry over to our base character because that is the parent. So this one will be fine to do updates on. So make sure you're in that master character. If you're not there, 
just do a search. You can select survival game kit, search for master character, and you'll see this one. Double click it to open it. And then we're going to be in the main event graph. If you're not there, you can double click, click it on the left hand side. And then we're going to go to the bottom of this green area and add a new custom event. So I'm just doing it right below the server look at rotation and we'll do custom event. So we're going to do add custom event. We're going to call this server set screen center. And he does it C E N T R E. I'm matching his notes just so that's easy uh, and makes sense if you see a screenshot somewhere else. And then you want to put executes on server. So to do that, you put the drop down over where it says replicates, do run on server. And you'll see there it says execute on server. And then you want to check reliable. Go ahead and compile that. And then we need to create a new variable. Uh, this will be at the very bottom on the left hand side. Click plus variable. And let's call this screen center. And once again, C A N T R E. The type needs to be a vector. So on the right hand side, variable type, hit the drop down and choose vector. And on this, we need to first set it. So I'm going to just drag it to the right here and do a set screen center. I'm going to connect it to that custom event we just created. And then I'm going to drag the uh, input for that screen center over to the center of that event. And it will add it to the event. So you can see there automatically added it, added, made it a, a name for it. In his notes, he calls this center. And so I will just change the name of it to match. But if you're keeping track on your own, that should be fine. So go ahead and compile that. And then in this master character, we need to go to the set all character rotations. To do this on the left hand side, where it says my blueprints, search for set all character rotations. And you can see here, uh, he's got the sequence that we don't have connected. First of all, this is something that we have to decide if we want to do. I'm going to do it just because we are using the camera system and we are using the screen center variable for this. So I'm going to leave this sequence stuff up here because that's our for pretty much record, just keeping track of what we're using and what we're not using. But off of inputs, I'm going to drag and then do a sequence just so we have another one like we do up top. And then from that, then one, I'm going to do server set screen center. And then let's get the variables that we're going to be passing into this. First of all, we've got our cameras. If you look at the left here, we've got third person camera, first person camera. Uh, and then we have the ADS camera. These are what we're using to kind of switch between the weapons and things like that. So what we want to do is first of all, we're going to, you could right click and do a get FP camera. I'll just show you FP camera. And then you would scroll to the bottom. There's a component. You can get that. Or you can drag them from the left hand side. I'm going to drag all three TP camera, FP camera, and then ADS camera, because we're going to be using all of those. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to get the player inventory component. You can see the component along the bottom. Select that. Off of that, I want to get the camera view. Because I want to find out what camera we're currently using. And then I'm going to do a select off of that. And what the select does is it's giving me the options based on that variable I passed into it. So I'm selecting the camera view. The two things, the two choices in camera view are a first person camera and a third person camera. Well, I have those two already out there. So let's go and connect up the first person camera and then we'll connect up the third person camera. And so if you're on one of those, it will choose the right one and then pass that on with the select. But we need to do another select. And so to do this, let's once again, get this player inventory component. I'm just going to make a copy of it. So control C, control V. I'm going to get the Boolean of whether or not ADS is active. So do get ADS and you can see that non edit ADS. This is going to be a true false. And then we'll do a select off of this. And you can see here, we've got select. I'm going to move these over a bit. So you can see here, uh, if it's true, if ADS is true, it's going to do one thing. If it's false, it's going to do another. Well, if it's true, we want to pass it the ADS camera. If it's false, that means it's got to be a third person or third per first person camera. It's not using that aim down sights camera. 
and then it'll go to false. So this will make it properly as it kind of goes down the line, pick the correct camera. We then want to get the world location. So get world location of that camera that's being used at this moment. I'm going to move this over just so I have enough room for this. So it's going to get the, the look world location of the camera we're currently using. And then it's going to set center based on that. Go ahead and compile. Now that we have this value uh, that's being passed in and then setting that variable here, we need to change. Uh, there's an area in the screen trace that's using this value. Well, actually, it's using a value from somewhere else, uh, but it's not proper. It's not basing it on the current camera being used. So we want to make a change to this. And to do this, we need to go to the master range weapon. So on the first of all, I'm going to do save all. And that'll save that master character. We did make changes to it. You want to make sure that it is compiled or else you may have an error on this next thing we're doing. And then I'm going to select the survival game kit on the left-hand side, and I'm going to choose master range weapon. Open that up. And then we need to get to screen trace. So on the left-hand side under my blueprint, search for screen trace. And then at the end of this first comment box here, see where it says camera center. We want to, instead of this vector variable, we want to pass it the one that we just set. So first of all, right click and do a get player inventory component. And then from there, we're going to get the master character because that's where that's set at. And then from there, I'm going to get screen and you see there's great get screen center. Then I'm going to connect that up into the top of that plus Hit compile. And then you can save that. One final step for this fix is going to be in the master character once again. So you should still have that open. Go ahead and select it. And then we want to go and add it, actually fix the thing that we just did. So we need to be in that set all character rotations. You, um, you can see on the left hand side, you might have that in there still, but if not, just type set all character and double click that set all character rotations. I want to add something in between before it gets to this set screen center because it's doing a little something a little extra here. From then one, drag out and do an is valid. Do the one with the question mark. And then right click and do a get held actor. This is just making sure that whatever you're holding in your hand is valid before it bothers checking the screen center because up to this point, if you're holding something, for instance, even with uh, building, you have to have that master blueprint in your hand. Now, if you were to make an adjustment and make it so that you didn't require the blueprint be, to be in your hand to uh, do something like you know, like build and you wanted to have a crosshair or something so they could point, that might change. Uh, but for now, as it is, you can just add that is valid there and it won't bother doing the screen center checks and setting that variable if you're not having an item in your hand that's valid. Go and save that. Next, we want to be in the inventory HUD. So make sure all these are saved. No asterisks uh, on the right hand side. You can hit save all here on the main screen as well. Even though we're not really changing this. Uh, on the survival game kit, I want you to search for inventory HUD. Double click that. And then in here, you need to be on the graph because we want to be in the blueprint side of it. Uh, and then on the upper left, search for set and inventory slot. Open up that graph. And then we need to find, there's a comment that says find free slot in convert widget. And it needs to be the one, so like here's find inventory free slot. That's not right. We need to find the one that says find free slot in convert widget. So I'm going to zoom out. You can see it's right about here in the blueprints. There's a branch on the left-hand side that says, is it the item inventory? And we just need to make a little change of how it deals with this branch. So first of all, uh, after this cast, we don't want it to go into this branch. What I'm going to do is drag from the end of the cast up to the top 
where it has that redirect node. And you see how it bypasses it? Pretty much making it so this branch, uh, well, it never is reached. If the cast fails, it continues on to the bottom here. If it's successful, it goes to the top. It doesn't bother checking this condition. So, and what this does is this fixes the shift click moving items uh, in when you're converting a, in the convert component. So uh, there was an error with that. This bypasses that error and you shouldn't have that issue anymore. Next, we need to be in the player inventory component. So make sure this is compiled and saved before you, you can close it if you'd like. I'm gonna leave these all open for now. And then with survival game kit selected on the left and then search for player building component. Double click that. Then we need to be at the very beginning of the building trace section. So on the upper left, let's search for building trace. Double click that function. And then you'll see building trace here. Get ignore actors. So what we want to do here is we want to delete this get ignore actors. What you could also do is drag it up the top. Just drag it directly and then break the end of that. Just so it's sitting up there. If you want to have that for the record. That is fine. So compile and save that. And then in here, we need to go to the begin play. So we're in the player building component. On the upper left, search for begin play. And go just to the, to the one that's the graph. Uh, double click that on the top, begin play. And we need to change. You see here at the bottom, it goes from a branch here. And then there is a set ignore actors timer. Uh, what we want to do is select that whole comment box and what's in it. Right click and hit cut. And then we want to connect that back up because we're going to place that somewhere else. So connect the two. So it's just going on as if it, it isn't there. Uh, and then we need to go to the very end here. See where there's this client conditions, double click that. It's going to take you into a collapse graph, control V you paste that box that we just got. And then I'm going to connect that in between. So go from true to the beginning of that set timer by function name, and then connect that to outputs. And that just fixes an ignore actor check being run too often. This makes it so it's being run only when it needs to be uh, before where it was at, it was running it more often than it should. And that should help with, uh, with performance. And then here's the final fix. After that, we'll have some improvements that they'll be doing. Uh, but this is going to be in the player inventory component. So you may already have it open, um, but I, I, we, I don't think we've touched that part yet. So go ahead and search for, in the left-hand side, have a survival game selected, and then search for player inventory component. Double-click it. Then we need to be in the event graph. So if not, you can... Double click it on the upper left. It should look something like this. Uh, on the right hand side, you'll see begin play. And we need to create a variable. We're going to place a variable in here and then set it. So let's go ahead and make a little bit of room. You can move everything to the right of begin play over to the right some. Just make some room for that. And we need to, on the lower left, create a new variable. So go ahead and click plus variable and call it base inventory lots. The type needs to be an integer. And then you can drag that out and do set base inventory slots and connect that up. So it's in between and then right click and do a get inventory slots, So get inventory slots, and then connect that to the set. It look, should look something like this. I'm going to go ahead and bring these closer together again. And put that comment box back. You can see it should end up looking like this. Now we need to go into the inventory HUD once again. We left that open. If not, go to the showcase and search for inventory HUD. Open it up. Uh, but I'm just going to go directly to it because I've been leaving all these windows up open uh, up to this point. Make sure that last one is compiled and saved because if 
if you'll notice that if you created something like this and set it, you didn't do a compile and save, you'll get an error when you go to the next section and then try to work with it. So from the inventory HUD, we need to go where it says set end inventory slot. I'm already there, but if you don't have it on the upper left, search for set end inventory, and you'll be able to open up that event graph. From in here, uh, we need to find where it says, is the slot not a backpack slot? So let's see, is the slot, so on the lower right, you'll see, is the slot not a backpack slot? And it's connecting here to this minus. Well, we don't want to use this. You can actually move that down into the right. Uh, what we're going to end up use, doing is using that variable we just created. So let's do get player inventory component. From that, we're going to get the base inventory slots. That's the variable we just created. With the, that was an integer. And that I'm going to connect into the top of that minus and bring that in. And then it's not going to use this old code at all. So go ahead and compile that and save it. So that's the fixes. Uh, there also are four improvements that we're going to be doing in this. The first one has to do with death animations. Um, you may be using ragdoll or something. Uh, I have shown in, in the discord server, how to do ragdoll instead of death animations. We'll go ahead and change this just in case, you know, cause maybe somebody was using the death animations and not using ragdoll from ALS. And if they're doing that, that's fine. Uh, we'll accommodate both. This won't end up breaking anything. It's just going to be moving a variable from one place to another. We need to create a variable for the death animations in uh, the, the inventory component. Right now, if you look at the mannequin anim BP, it's pulling these death animations from a select that has a manual list of three different animations in it. Uh, it's pulling a random integer based on between zero and two, which is actually a total three, because it'd be zero, one, two. And that's how it's choosing from these. We want to have it to where those are actually set in a variable so that you could swap those out and do the different things with them. And we want to be in the player inventory component. So to do that, make sure in the showcase, you do a search for under uh, survival game kit, you can do a search for player inventory component. If you don't already have it open, double click that. Uh, but you may have it open because we just created this base inventory slots. Uh, variable. Now in here on the lower left, click plus for variables. And let's search for, or actually let's, let's type in death animations. Okay, there we go. So death animations. Uh, and then for the drop down, let's choose anim sequence. That option is just as anim sequence, select that. And then the right hand side of that, you want to hit the icon and then choose array. So it's going to give you an array. You need to compile so that it lets you set those values for the default value. And then you also need to check instance editable. So hit that plus three times. And then for the drop downs, so let's type death. I'm going to copy that so I can don't have to type it every time. Death one, death two, and death three. Compile and save that. And then let's go back to that mannequin and MVP. Over here, uh, you need to get to the event graph. And then on the right-hand side here, you'll see character death animation, random between three animations. You want to zoom in there. And at the end where it has the play animation, what we want to do is pull from that uh, variable that we just created instead of using this select. So I'm going to go and delete the random integer within range and uh, that select box. And then I'm going to do get character. And we can do this based on the get ALS base character. From there, I'm going to do get player inventory component. Look like this. I'm then going to then get the death animations variable I just created. Now move this a little bit to the left and put it to where it kind of starts below that get pawn owner. From this array, I'm going to get the length of it. So just search for length. And this will tell you, uh, for instance, we have three variables in there. So it's going to say, all right, there's the length is three. And then I am going to do a get. I'm going to get a copy of that. I'm going to put that up to the new anim to play. Now, 
there is a bug with this that's going to come up in a later patch. I might as well deal with it right now. Um, I usually like sticking pretty close to what we're doing, but I'm going to explain this bug just so you understand. Now, if the death animations length is three, so there's a total of three animations in there, and we're doing a get of... Well, actually, sorry, there's one more thing I need to add in here before we do this. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so you can see what it, the problem is going to be. So drag this get a little bit more to the right. Uh, from this length, let's do random integer in range. And then you want to drag, control click and drag that to max and have the min be zero. You can connect that return value to the get. Now, the, th the max is three. If it passes it to three, which, which uh, animation is that going to be? Because the first animation is zero. The second animation is one. The third animation is two. There is no third animation. So to fix this, and this will come up in a future patch, and I will explain at that time that I've already fixed it and show them how to do it. But I just don't, in case you don't have, you don't get to updating the next ones right away, I'd like to fix this for you so that it doesn't become an issue. So uh, instead, what we'll do is make a little bit of room here and the length, we're going to do a length and then do a minus. So we're going to do integer minus integer and then connect that to the max. And we're just going to subtract one from it because zero, one, two, we, the length is three, but we want the max to be two because that's the max in the array that you'll be able to pull. So hopefully that kind of explains what's going on, but this will be a little bit different than the patch notes, but I know he fixes this later and this is how he fixes it. So hopefully that helps you out and at least you'll understand why that was incorrect in the first place. Uh, next, we need to fix an issue with the networking on the player inventory. Actually, this is an enhancement. It's going to be a little bit longer one. So if you'd like, we can first compile and save the Anim BP there. And then we're going to be in the player inventory component. Uh, so you may already have that open. If not, go to showcase and search for it. Uh, but we're going to go in the player invent inventory component and we want to go to the running state. So on the upper left here, let's do a search for running state. Double click that. You can see in the middle here, there's a comment box that has less stuff below it. That's the client update hunger. Uh, we're going to be making some changes to the client update hunger, uh, thirst and stamina. Uh, and so what we need to do is go to each of these variables. Uh, first of all, we have hunger and we're going to set some replication on this because right now it's not replicated. We want this variable to be replicated. So select replicated and then choose owner only for the replication condition. So select hunger, change the replication to replicated, owner only. You can compile that. Uh, and then we also need to do this for thirst. So in the upper left, let's go ahead and search for thirst now. So we've done hunger because we did it here once, it changed, you know, changed the whole reference for that. Uh, but we need to do a search for thirst. And you'll see a variable there called thirst. Select that. Do the same thing. Replication, replicated, owner only. Uh, we'll not compile it yet. It's just save some time because we're going to do stamina and do the exact same thing on the upper left. Search for stamina. Replication, replicated, owner only. Uh, and then one more we're going to do is health. We're going to do this one a little bit differently. So select the health variable. We're going to choose replicated, but not owner only. The reason is the hunger, thirst, and stamina are kind of a local only variable. Health though, uh, other people can see your health to see you know, how alive you are. So you want that to be replicated, so we'll give them ability to see it. Go ahead and compile and save that. And then in here, you should still have the client update hunger uh, selected. We're going to move this up because we aren't going to be using this to update the hunger anymore. It's a replicated variable, so we don't need to. So what I'm going to do is so we'll just click the, the variable and the event there. I'm just going to drag past it. So it goes straight to the branch and then disconnect the, the end of that. 
So it'll just be up to the top. Now what we want to do is right click on this, right click client update hunger. And I want to do find references. And you can see here, the initial one is the call. So when you open up the event client update hungry, this is actually where it's going, but we need to change all the references to this. So double click each of those and do the same thing we just did. Select those two boxes, move them up, drag past them, disconnect the end. We want to do that for each of these. The second one I already did. We're going to go to the third one here. Same thing, just move them up. Back past. Move them up. And I'm just disconnecting the end one, even though it doesn't do anything, just to make it clear. There's less confusion. And just making nothing connected to it. And the max hunger, uh, you don't have to worry about that one. So you see there's client update hunger, leave the max hunger for now. Cause we're, we didn't change that variable. That's not replicated and that might mess up some things. So, all right, now that we have done the hunger, now we need to do the thirst. Let's go back to the running state. What I can do is double click that top one in this search client update hunger, actually the second one. So these are the idle states. You have the, uh, running states. What we can do here, see where it says client update hunger. Instead, let's search for client update and type thirst brings up a very similar list. And then we're going to double click through each of these. First of all, this is the event being called. That's fine. I'm just going to make it so it doesn't get called. Up, click the one that says client update thirst and just disconnect. You see that one is at the end. So we can just disconnect it. So it doesn't get called. Same thing with the second one. Third one. Fourth one is in the middle. So we actually need to bypass it. Connect the end. Next one as well. Break those links and we can leave the max alone. Uh, and then from thirst, we're going to do stamina. Go search for that. And first one is going to be the thing that's called, uh, then we'll go where it says client update stamina. Uh, we wanted to go to that return node, so we don't want to just disconnect it go and bypass it, drag it up above, disconnect that link to the next one. This one's at the very end. So we actually can just disconnect it. So the next one it's in the middle. So we will want to go ahead and just disconnect that. Now it is pulling something from the stamina. So just disconnect it from the top, leave that check happening below. You can move it up if you'd like. So it's a little bit closer. And then we'll go to the last one here and we'll bypass it. Move that up, connect the stamina and the end. Just move it up above. Now you can compile that. So that takes care of the hunger, the thirst and the stamina. Uh, you could delete some things in there, but we're going to leave that. Nothing is being called anymore. And this is something where I don't think there's not one for health that we need to do right now. So, uh, we don't need to worry about the health in the same way, but we need to create a new custom event, uh, to change how it's, it's calling these. So. What we need to do is be in the player inventory component. We need to go to the event graph again. So on the upper left, make sure you clear out that search, double click under graphs, event graph. Let's go to that main page. Uh, and then from here, we want to be in the blue area. And we're going to be creating a thing that says client update hunger. You'll you do a search on the upper left and you'll see there's no client update 
hunger. Uh, well, there, there is, but we need to do instead, sorry, there is, if you do a search in the upper left, you'll see that there is a client update hunger. These are the ones that are being called, but we're, since we're never calling these, we need to do one that says client update all slots. So clear that out in the very bottom of the blue area. Make a little room and let's do add custom event. Call this client update all slots. Look like that. And uh, the input type we need to do as an a item inventory variable. So what we want to do is let's first do set inventory. You can see here under non-edit, there's set inventory that's an array. I'm going to connect that up. And I'm going to drag that array into the center where it says add pin to node. You can see there it added it for me. Uh, one other thing, make sure you compile that. And then for the replicates, you want to set it to run on client. So hit the drop down here. Do run on owning client. And then you want to check reliable as well. So it's run executes on owning client and it is reliable. Now from this, where after we set that inventory, we need to do a for each loop on it. So drag off the array and do for each loop. And connect those up. And based on as it goes through this loop, we need to update that inventory slot. So uh, from here, you can drag off of the loop body and do update inventory slot. And connect array element to item. So it's going to update each slot with that item. And then you can compile that. So now we need to go to the update all slots section. So on the upper left, let's search for update all slots. And under networking, you'll see that. In the very beginning here, we have update all slots and there's a loop that's happening. Well, we do that in this other uh, section that we're wanting to do. So what you could do is drag those two, the loop and the client update inventory slots off. Go ahead and disconnect the beginning, the array and the exec. And then you can disconnect the completed. So it's kind of just sitting it up there. For records. Uh, and then what we want to do is drag off of, off of all update all slots, new client, update all slots. And this is the one that we just created. And that input is going to be the inventory that was there already. And then just connect the end to that reroute node below. So you can compile that. And while we're still in here, we need to make an adjustment to the stamina recharge. So after that compiles in the upper left, we're going to search for recharge stamina. Double click that function. And there's where we disconnected that, but we need to get to where we check if the stamina is 100. You see it's in the middle there. And we have this check that's happening, max stamina. Uh, but we're, what we're going to do is add some things here between the after this initial branch under false, we're going to add another check. I'm going to need a little more room here. Let's go ahead and make this comment overall comment box a little bit bigger. I'm going to drag this one over to the right. Extend that second one a little bit farther to the right. Give myself some room. From false, I'm going to do another branch. Now the condition of this branch is going to be based off of stamina and max stamina. So I'm just going to select both of those with a control click, control C and control V. I'm going to put one right above the other here. Uh, and then you could leave this connected. I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to select max stamina 
control C and control V that to the right, connect that to that set stamina like that. Uh, you can straighten it out however you would like something like that. Uh, now from these two, I'm going to do an equals equals. Cause I want to see if the stamina is equal to the max stamina. So do equals equals. And you want to do a float equals float. You can see here equals float. Go and connect some max stamina to that. And if they're the same, that's going to be what decides this condition here. So if the max stamina and the stamina are the same, true, it's going to set max stamina as stamina. Uh, the final thing we need to go into the master character. So go ahead and compile and save this. And then select master character. If you don't have that open, go into the showcase, search for master character, and then you can double click it to open it. And it should take you here. Uh, what we need to do is go to the player inventory component. You'll see that on the left hand side, the upper left. Select player inventory component. You'll see a details panel uh, that shows on the right hand side. And we need to find under here, uh, search for replicate on the search details. You see the checkbox that says replicate component replicates. Check that. Uh, and then we want to do the same thing and save that pilot. Then go to the ALS base character. If you don't have that selected, go to the showcase, search for it. But we, if you haven't been closing these, they're already done. And then on the upper left, once again, go to the player inventory component, search for replicate and make sure, verify that's checked. And it most likely is already checked. And then you can save that. So that should improve the networking on the player inventory component. Now let's go and do some improvements to the networking on the master character. So go back to that master character tab and we need to do some fixes. Remember when I explained in the beginning of this video about parents being overridden by the child? Well, this is going to be a case of that. So what we need to do is go to the event graph, select on the top. And what we're doing is going to the event tick. So what you could do if you want to jump directly to it is search for event tick um, on the left hand side. Well, it might not be on there uh, because we probably during our merge, remember I went through and removed that. Uh, because the event tick was not being called because it was being overridden. Um, and so that was an issue. Uh, so there is no tick. Uh, and we're not using the set all characters. So let's look at set all character rotations. Let's find where this is being called. So I'm just going to find this really quick under find results, set all character character rotations. Okay. So you can see here on the right hand side, client events where I have falling detection. Uh, that is where I am calling this. And so is falling. That's the only time it's being called. So what we want to do is add another to this and we're going to call this timer. So right click and do custom event, add custom event, oops, select it, clear that search on the upper right, and let's call this timer. Uh, and I'm going to drag that into set all character rotations. Uh, with the same thing, we have event begin play, which you've already kind of bypassed, event on landed, player landed, Event begin play doesn't get called. Uh, and, and what that's doing is setting the camera, but you got to think if this event begin play is being overridden by the event begin play on the child. So it's never actually being called. Uh, so what we're going to do is disconnect this. And then from this event begin play, we're going to do set timer by event. And then from this event, we're going to do a create event. 
From the drop down, we're going to choose timer. We're going to put this timer to 0 0.06. Check looping and then connect that to begin play. You can compile that. And so we've got our timer event here we created connecting to that. Uh, now we want to go through on this master, master character and we want to go to the event tick once again, which doesn't exist. So we have to figure out how to kind of work around this because we have removed the event tick. Uh, we could re-add it because it was just one. So what I'm going to do is right click on the top here, event tick. Uh, I'm going to do switch as authority. We're going to use that macro. If it's local, we're going to do a branch here. And we're going to get is locally controlled. If it's locally controlled, we are going to set look at rotation. Uh, that variable is going to be based on get control rotation and connect that to the look at rotation. Uh, if it's remote, we want to do an is valid check. Do the one with the question mark. We're going to get the controller. And we want to make sure that the controller is valid. That's actually a player. If it is, then we're going to go and also set that look at rotation. So go ahead and compile that. I would have to verify that this is actually being used, but to match his notes, I'm putting it in here and then we'll test it afterwards, make sure it all works. Uh, now what we want to do is go into the face movement direction. Which is under actually not the, not the master character. We need to go to the ALS base character. Let's see if this exists here. Face movement direction. You can see it here on the base character search for face movement direction. You can see it here. And then you see the server rotate character set. That's then coming down here. Instead of going to that, I'm just going to drag from the set all the way down to this reset. I'm going to disconnect both things coming into that event. And then I'm going to disconnect this last one. I'm going to drag it up there as well. So we're just going to make it so it's not using those two. Go ahead and compile that. And now we need to go into our anim, uh, anim BP for this, which it doesn't use. You'll see in the instructions, it says third person anim. We don't have that. We have the mannequin anim BP that we use for this merge. Uh, in here, we want to go through and get to the set character variables. On the left-hand side, search for that, double click it. And you can see where it's setting the pitch and along the bottom middle here, right about this section. It's setting these, but we don't need to, because if you notice, it never gets called. We're not using this in the merged version. Uh, all that code would go right here, uh, but because we're not setting the pitch and the and everything at this point, we don't need to bother doing that. Uh, but it's the same thing at the end, where it sets the yaw, never reaching that point, because we disconnected, we're using the ALS to do these things, so you really don't need to worry about that. So we're gonna skip that whole section. Uh, the last thing here is going to be improvements to the network for the master range weapon. So if you don't have it already open, go to showcase, search for master range weapon. I already have it here. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the event graph. So make sure the search is clear to the left, go to graph, double click event graph. And then in the blue section here, so we're going to go in the master range weapon here in just a little bit, but first we need to make a change in the player inventory component. So make sure you go to that player inventory component. If you need to, you can search in the showcase and find it. Uh, in this upper left, clear that out under graphs. We need to be in the event graph. Then we want to be in the blue section here. So I'm just going to create a custom event to the right. So custom event. We're going to add a custom event. Call this client update weapon inventory plot. 
The type for replicates is going to be run on owning client. And then tick reliable. Go ahead and compile that. And then we need to get a get for the weapon inventory. So right click just to the right of it. And then we'll do get weapon inventory. From that, we're going to set array element. You can connect those two up like this. Uh, and then we're going to, first of all, you have the item here. I'm going to drag that item to the center of the custom event we just added. So it adds a variable that's set up properly for me. Because this is going to be a weapon uh, inventory item here. So go ahead and drag that to the center. You'll see add pin to node. And then what you can do, instead of calling it item, just rename it to weapon inventory. Like that. I uh, want to drag off of that and do a break. And then we just want to get this index and choose index there. So it should look something like this. Leave size to fit unchecked. Go ahead and compile that. And now we need to go over to the master range weapon here. And then we're going to add that event that we just called to the set weapon inventory. So in here, uh, you'll be an event graph on the upper left or on the left hand side under my blueprint. You can search for set weapon inventory. Double click that. Uh, here I got some testing I was doing. Clear that out. Okay, so on the very end, we have client update weapon inventory. And it's pulling from the player inventory component and it's using an array here. Well, what we want to do client update weapon inventory. What we want to do instead is client update inventory slot. This is the wrong one right here. So go ahead and delete this and you can delete these two variables below from the uh, player inventory component. Let's search for client update weapon inventory and choose slot and connect those two up like it was before. And then this struct out, go ahead and drag that into the weapon inventory. And it'll look something like that. Go ahead and compile. And then we need to do something similar. Uh, there's another section where this exists. So in the deduce condition under the master range weapon here, go ahead and search on the left-hand side for deduce condition. Uh, same thing here. There's update client weapon inventory right about here, four in from the left. Go ahead and select that client update weapon inventory, delete it. We're going to drag off of there and do client update. Actually, we need to do it from the player inventory component or else it won't find it. So you have this player inventory component that existed already off of that drag and do client update weapon inventory slot. Connect those up. And then we need to figure out how we're going to do this. Leave these two variables here because we're going to be using this to be able to figure this out. So do a get there. And then we want to get weapon inventory or let's see, get item. Here we go. So get item under non edit, select that. Uh, and we need to get, rather than doing a break of this, let's right click and do split struct pin. So select, right click on the little dot, split struct pin. And you'll see here, now we have an item index, put that into the get and then connect that up to weapon inventory. So it's going to pull that, go ahead and compile that. And that concludes the 1.8, uh, update from, uh, 1.74. So. Hopefully that helped you out. Let's go ahead and hit play here. I'm going to make sure that everything is saved. Also in the main window, we want to go through the showcase here and change the version number because we're no longer on 1.74. We're on 1.8 and we want to be able to track this information. So in the level, find where it says survival game kit 
and then 1.74, select the 1.74 and change that to 1.8. Uh, you can save that. Let's go ahead and hit play and just make sure that we get no errors. Because that's the, the one condition. Since this is not stock, there are custom things that we've done to this. Just want to make sure that generally things work after the update. So you don't get any complaints and errors popping up. Just going to make sure that we can fire. Okay. That looks like it works. So uh, everything seems to be working. That should conclude the 1.8. If you found this helpful, uh, don't be afraid to go and like, subscribe, click the bell on this button. Uh, one thing that you can do that really is helpful is go to join our Discord server. Uh, we have a lot of people in there throughout the day, a lot of questions and answers that are going back and forth, people helping each other out, uh, not only with blueprints, but level design, assets, all kinds of things in there. Uh, if you'd like to join it, just click the link below. Also the Patreon, if you want to help support purchasing future assets, uh, I use those Patreon funds just to purchase things that people are interested in receiving a tutorial on since I don't own every asset. Uh, so if you're interested in that, go check out the tiers for Patreon. Uh, and just make sure that you check out the next video. Uh, this Your support and the kind words and the things that you, you do to uh, show me that you actually appreciate these videos really do make a difference. And it really helps me to have the motivation to go and continue making them. So I appreciate all the support and I will catch you all next time.